Hallelujah. 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 And always tell in his mercy endures forever. Yes, Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We told the Yahweh for his Ahava, for his love and kindness, his tender mercy. And he continues to pour out upon us, Israel. Yeah. We will not be able to stand if it were not for the mercy of Almighty Yahweh. He has a process that each and every one of us we, it take, we must go through. A process that is that is very, very um, sharp and it's to the point. Yes. yes. It's the only way, Israel. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That we're going to be able to stand in these last and evil days. Hallelujah. And that process is a cleansing process. It takes the washing, first of all, by the Dhamma Yahshua Hamashiach. And it takes us walking after the Torah of Almighty Yahweh. Was there not a plan set? All you that are listening, we do brought you all for joining with us tonight. We had uh, a little bit of uh, difficulties with a system. Hallelujah. We do brought Yahweh for all things. And for this opportunity, I may come and speak unto the house of Israel. As I somewhat continue on what I talked about the last time concerning the Midbar or the wilderness. There was a process that Yisrael, out of Mizraim, had to take in order to prepare to prep the house, Yisrael, that it may be prepared to enter into the promised land, that which Yahweh has promised unto uh, their forefathers, or our forefathers, Yisrael. And it takes that same cleansing of that same process today. As we look back, even as Yisrael, as they dwell in Mizraim, we know that they stayed or they inhabited a land that had much wealth. They had no need of anything. Hallelujah. Their bread or their meat was plentiful. The water was plentiful. As I looked through Torah, I did not find any places where they were murmuring or complaining amongst the house. Why? Because at that time, everything that was provided was there. Hallelujah. Don't we know that Yahweh, everything is provided for us, Yisrael, on this day, even at this very time, that it's only by the mercies of Yahweh that we have not been consumed by the world. But even yet they possess the fruit of the land, or the riches there in Gosha, yet Yahweh had to move them out of that comfort zone. So what happened? We know that Yisrael mostly, for the most part, were laborers of the building of the structure there in Mizraim. And as Yosef, as he passed and a new king rose up, and as Moshe sought to, brought, to bring Yisrael out of Mizraim, what did that Pharaoh do? And we know that Yahweh hardened the heart of that Pharaoh. He commanded that the labors would be more intense among the house of Yisrael. Yeah. To such a degree that it was, it was very, very hard and wearisome amongst the people of Yisrael. Yet even in that Yisrael, Yahweh heard the cries of Yisrael. Hallelujah. Don't you know we're in Mizraim, Yisrael? And what Yahweh is doing is preparing us to enter into the promised land. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. So there's a preparation that must, must take place. Yes. As we look back on Mizraim, did not they have to go through the waters of the Red Sea? Did they not have to endure yes. even the... Um, fearfulness of their heart, Yisrael, yeah. as the armies went forth to pursue Yisrael. Yeah. Don't you know those same armies that Satan, he come forth as a roaring lion, what, to pursue Yisrael, yeah. to steal, to kill, to take back. He's right on our heels, Yisrael, yeah. after us. What? To bring us back into condemnation. That was condemnation in, in Mizraim. The labors. Yet Yahweh, he hears the voice of Yisrael. 
Even today, he hears the voice of Israel. Don't think Yahweh don't hear your cries, Israel. Don't think Yahweh don't understand your heart. The labor of Ahava. As you strive for the imuna of Almighty Yahweh and the press on in this battle. He has provided everything we need, Israel. Everything that we need in Yahshua HaMashiach. All we need is in him, Israel. So let us hold fast. Let us keep our eyes on the prize. Let's set our eyes upon the whole high calling in Yahshua HaMashiach, that we walk without sin, and that we do all things to please Almighty Yahweh. Hallelujah. I want to begin reading in Shema Exodus chapter 3, verse 16. Concerning Yahweh giving a commandment to gather the Zakain on the elders of Yisrael. It's important that we as a Zakain, as I had mentioned a few messages before, that we gather Yisrael together. We as leaders, we should not have that attitude that when we see a group of Ark that we try to steer around. Or as the Zakain, Rayak, whoever it may be. As they sit, and we know that there is great wisdom, that there is safety amongst those that are wise just right y'all. We shouldn't find ourselves trying to skirt around. We should join in to hear, to Shema, to understand what Yahweh is speaking in this hour. Hallelujah. So, So it says here in Exodus chapter 3, verse 16, Yahweh commands to go and gather the Zakain of Yisrael together and say to them, Yahweh the sovereign rulers of Yahava, the sovereign ruler of Abraham, Yitzhak, and Yaakov has appeared unto me. Did he not say that Yahweh appeared? <laughs> Saying, I have surely visited you and seen that which is done to you in Mizraim. You don't think Yahweh, he sees what is being done unto his house? We're close to his bosom, Yisrael. Hallelujah. Verse 17. And I have said, I will bring you up out of, what does it say? The affliction. The affliction. No, it was not tough times in this period. It was affliction. Upon the mind. Upon the nephesh, upon the lay of Yisrael, we're being afflicted in this hour, Yisrael. We're being tried. There are those that are facing very serious circumstances, Yisrael. That's why it's so important for us to pilot, to send out an offering of prayer unto Yisrael, those that are scattered throughout the old land. Hallelujah. For there are those that are struggling, there are those that are in affliction, Yisrael. And if we don't watch ourselves, if we don't guard our love against the enemy, we're going to find our nephesh and our minds being afflicted in this hour by the spirit of Mizraim. He said, I will bring you up out of the affliction of Egypt to the land of the Canaanites, the Hittites, the Amorites, and the Perizzites, and the Havites, and the Jebusites, to a land, it says, flowing. Does it say flowing? Yeah. What is flowing, um, what is that an example of if you think of something flowing? Overflow. Yeah. Filling a glass of water to the brim, and then it overflows. Yes. Much, more than enough, abundance. Rivers flowing with an abundance, bursting over the dams. The dams cannot hold back the volume or the power of the rivers. So what does it do? What is a dam designed for? Just a little restriction. That's all it's for. But it cannot stop that river, and it continues to overflow. It says, to a land flowing with milk and with honey, with the fatness of Almighty Yahweh. Shouldn't we desire the sincere milk of Almighty Yahweh, the Torah? Do not we as babes and sucklings, do not babies, the bane, desire the sincere milk? They, they won't accept anything else. A child that is held in the arm. They, 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 cannot, they won't receive a, a piece of chicken. No. 
That's not what they want. That's not what they're ready for. They desire the sincere meal. Don't you know Yahweh desires to give us the meat, Israel? Hallelujah. But yet we are not yet ready for that, Israel. So what does he do? He allows us to partake of the meal. The things that is needed that we may grow. Our bones may grow strong. Hallelujah. That we may put on weight, put on fatness, Israel. He said, a land flowing with milk and honey with the sweetness of his Ahava. Verse 18. And they shall hearken unto your voice. And you shall come, you, and it says, the Zalkain, the elders of Israel, to the king of Mizraim of Egypt. And you shall say to him, Yahweh, the sovereign ruler of the Hebrews, hath met with us. And now, let us go. Hallelujah. What are you allowing to bind you, Yisraya? What is that weight that is upon your left? Hallelujah. But you know, Yahshua HaMashiach has come, that those things may drop off. All you have to do is just let it go, Yisraya. Let it go. Give it into Yahshua's hands. And now let us go. We beseech you. He says, three days journey into the Midbar, into the wilderness. Why? That we may offer a Zabah unto Almighty Yahweh. An offering. It says here, a sacrifice to Yahweh our Almighty. Are we able to give offerings the Zabah unto Almighty Yahweh freely when we are all bound and burdened down, held by the shackles of our emotions, by the shackles of this world? In debt, the world designed to put you right in debt. There are very few people in this nation and around the world that are not in debt. They're bound. Hallelujah. Three days into the wilderness that we may survive unto Almighty Yahweh. Don't you know that's what Yahweh desires us, Yisrael? But yet, we must go or we must enter, traverse into the wilderness. You think about what takes up your time throughout the day, Israel. Yes, yes. Is it the Mishvah? Be honest with yourself. Yes. Is it the Torah of Almighty Yahweh? Or are we fighting for the meagerly elements of this world? Yes, Food, raiment, a place to stay. Mm -hmm. The Israel at this time, did they have any problem with that? No, because it was in Goshen. But we will find as I move forward at Yahweh, as Yahweh brought them out of their comfort zone, out of Mizraim, out of Goshen, into the wilderness. What is the first thing you think we, they do and that we do when Yahweh moves us forward out of our comfort zone, in the place where we think that we want to be or should be? Hallelujah. I will get to that, Israel. It's one of the things that Yah, that Yah detests. Hallelujah. Verse 19. I am sure that the king of Mizraim will not let you go. No, not by a mighty hand. And I will stretch out my hand. And he says, and I will smite Mizraim with all of my wonders, which I will do in the midst thereof. And after that, he will let you go. The wonders of Almighty Yahweh. What have Yahweh done for us, Israel? Yeah? Sometimes you just have to go and, and think back and see where Yahweh has brought you from. See how far he has brought us. Hallelujah. I know he's brought me from a mighty long way, Israel. Yeah? Hallelujah. And yet I still have a ways to go. But yet he is leading us, Israel. Yeah? Hallelujah. How does he lead us? In the darkness, even he leads us by his pillar of fire, of his ish, Yisrael. And a pillar of cloud by day, his Torah, his Mishpah. That should be what is over us, Yisrael. Yes. Not our emotions, not our thoughts, or what we think our aspirations. Our desire should not be to obtain the things of this life. Because those things perish. Money perishes. Cars perish. You got those that would die for a car or automobile to get a Mercedes, to get a million dollar home. They would sell their souls for that, Yisrael. But what should we give our nephesh for, our life? We should give it unto Almighty Yahweh. 
We should set our affection upon the things that are above. Not these things that we see here in this realm, Yisrael. He said, I will stretch out my hand and smite Egypt with all my wonders, which I would do in the midst thereof. And after that, I will let you go. Yes. Verse 21. And I will give this people favor in the sight of the Egyptians. And it shall come to pass that where you go, you shall not go empty. Don't you know when Yahweh moves us forward, Israel, no matter where we go, that he has not let us move into that place empty. We should not be empty tonight, Yisraeli. Even as we look back and see where Yahweh has brought us from, if you just look, you will see how much Yahweh has given unto us as a house and us individually. He has not left us empty. He has given us the riches of his Torah. He has given us Yahshua HaMashiach. He has given us his Ahava, his mercy. Aren't we alive and breathing tonight, Israel? Yeah. Hallelujah. Don't you know that's just another opportunity to lift up his name? Yeah. He's given us a space of time to get it right and to repent. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. He has not left us empty, Israel. Yeah. Verse 22. But it says here, but every woman shall borrow of her neighbor. And of her and of her that sojourns in her house jewels of silver and jewels of gold and raiment. You shall put them upon your sons and upon your daughters, and you shall spoil the Egyptians. Take all their wealth. Don't you know the wealth has been given unto the house of Israel? Sure it is. To where? Yes. To where upon our bodies, Yisrael, Hallelujah. upon the bayad of, of Almighty Yahweh. Yeah. We have great riches and wealth that the world would never get, that the world can never have, Yisrael. Yeah. Yeah. And those pearls and those jewels of Almighty Yahweh rest upon his people. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. Turn with me to Exodus chapter 8, verse 20, right. as we move on. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yahweh know what we need, Yisrael. Yeah. As we traverse, as we move forward, as the old conditions would say, higher heights or deeper depths in Yahshua HaMashiach, Yahweh does not leave us empty. So as we travel, we will not lack. No need of complaining, murmuring, wondering what Yahweh is going to provide for us on tomorrow. Hallelujah. That should be the least of our worries. Shema of Exodus chapter 8, verse 20. And Yahweh, he said unto Moshe, Rise up early in the morning and stand before Pharaoh. Lo, he comes forth to the water and say to him, Thus saith Yahweh, Let my people go, that they may serve me. That was one of the main purposes of Yahweh doing what he did. The task being increased upon Yisrael, they were not able to offer a Zabak or offering or serve Almighty Yahweh in those circumstances. They didn't have any time to. They were pressed. They were afflicted on every side, Yisrael. Not only that, Yahweh, he heard their cry. Those are one of the two main reasons why Almighty Yahweh moved. The cry of Yisrael, because of the burdens and the affliction. And also, they were not able to offer an offering unto Almighty Yahweh. We have been set free from this, Yisrael. We should not be bound that we cannot offer an offering of fire unto Almighty Yahweh. That we cannot open our lips to praise Him. That we cannot lift our voice, having not given us breath tonight, Yisrael. Hallelujah. We should not be bound that we cannot lift up His name. You see it amongst the heathen in the world, their football games. They lift their voices and they're not ashamed. No matter what kind of debt they have, and their pews standing there, whether it's the first, second rows, however many rows of seats are in those stadiums, they forget all that for the moment, and they praise their gods. 
out there on the football fields. They forget about their death or their loved one or the breakup or whatever. And for the moment they praise their God, they forget all those things. Hallelujah. We should forget all those things, just right, y'all, that we allow to bind us. For there's no reason we should be bound in this hour. That we cannot lift up our voices in a cochindra unto Almighty Yahweh. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That we may offer an offering of fire unto him. An offering that is pure. That is unspotted by the flesh. That's what he desires, just right, y'all. Obedience unto him. Hallelujah. That they may serve me, verse 21. He says, else, if you will not let my people go, behold, I will send swarms of flies upon you and upon your servants and upon your people and into your house. And the houses of the Egyptians shall be full of swarms of flies. You think about that, Israel. You know, if you leave your door open, if it's chilly outside, you may not see them, but those, the flies find their way in. If you open your door, if you allow a way. But in this time, there were flies in places that the doors have not been opened. In the storage places, in the house of Pharaoh, in the houses of his, of his high servants, of his council. There were flies everywhere, Yisrael. Swarm of flies, and also the ground thereon, they shall be, or they are. Even on the grounds, were covered with them. Can you imagine that? That's a sickening sight when you see swarms of flies just, just on everything, on a piece of meat. It's a nasty thing. Flies are nasty little things. Carry little diseases. The fly may land here on a carcass and fly somewhere else. Filthy things, Israel. Verse 22. Hallelujah. 8.22. And I will sever in that day the land of Goshen, which my people do well, that no swarms of flies shall be there. He set a fence or a gate around that place, Yisrael, where Yisrael dwell, that the flies did not come into their dwellings, the filthy things. You know, the world is full of flies, filthy things. Hallelujah. But we allow the Torah of Yahweh to abide in our love, Yisrael. They will not touch us, these filthy things, these swarm of flies. To the end that you may know that I am Yahweh in the midst of the Olam. Don't you know that's why we're not consumed, Israel? That's why Yahweh works these, these mighty acts before Israel. That we may know that it's him. That we may understand that it's by his mercy. It is by his Ahava that we are not consumed, Israel. Verse 23. He said, I will put a division between my people and your people talking about Mizraim. Don't you know there should be a division, Israel? Between us and the world? Can unclean or putrefied water and pure water flow out of the same fountain, Israel? It cannot happen. Because if a little bit of stagnant get into a pure stream, it's not pure anymore. Hallelujah. So there should be a dividing wall, a dividing line between us as being the house of Israel and the world. We should not want to look like the world. We should not want to walk as the world walks Israel or do the things that the world are doing. Are they not preparing for their Thanksgiving feast? I'm telling you, it's wild out there as I was coming in. The traffic, the stores packed. You can sense the tension in the air. People trying to get their last minute stuff done. Their time is more important than the next person. And don't let there be a, a failure or a register breakdown. They raise hell. But they do all that that they may offer up an offering on their feast days. Hallelujah. What are we willing to go through? 
What are we willing to do to set aside that we may bring us of our, or offering unto Almighty Yahweh on his feast days, Yisrael? We shouldn't let anything stop us. We shouldn't let anything slow us down, Yisrael. Hallelujah. And that's why Yahweh worked the works that he did and did the things that he did in Mizraim, that he may bring Yisrael, Yisrael out, that they may offer an offering unto Almighty Yahweh. Don't you, isn't that your desire, Yisrael? Don't you want to be free? Don't you know Yahshua, his dom, has set us free, Yisrael, from the Torah or from this law of sin, this law of death, this law of bondage of Mizraim? Yahweh has made us free from that. And yet he is moving us into a place where we shall be tried, into the wilderness. Hallelujah. If you recall on the last message, it was, I tried to expound upon the scapegoat and what Yahweh has done. How the sin was placed on the one goat and it was set in the wilderness. All the filthiness upon the house was set upon that one. Yahweh doesn't desire in this hour as he moves us forward into the wilderness and as we dwell in the wilderness, for us to be burdened down or our sins burdened down upon our heads, Yisrael. That's why he has sent Yahshua HaMashiach, that we may move freely, that nothing should stop us, that nothing should slow us down for doing what is pleasing in the sight of Almighty Yahweh. Hallelujah. Verse 24. And Yahweh, he did so. And there came a grievous swarm of flies into the house of Pharaoh and into his servant's house and into all the land of Mizraim. And the land was corrupt by reason of the swarms of the flies. This world is corrupt, Yisrael. And it's Yahweh that has sent the corruption on these flies. Why? That he may move the house forward. It's all in the plan of Almighty Yahweh. He sets the kings in place. He sets the nations in turmoil. Why? That he may prove the house of Yisrael. Yeah. Hallelujah. That he may bring us out, Yisrael. Verse 25. And Pharaoh called to Moshe and for Aharon and said, Go you, offer an offer of Zabah unto Yahweh in the land. In Goshen. Do it there. Why do you have to go out into the Midbar, into the wilderness to offer unto Almighty Yahweh? And Moshe said, it is not meet to do so. It will not work. Is that what Yahweh desired for Yisrael to offer an offering? And in Mizraim? No, that's not what he desired. He desired to bring them out of this bondage, to offer an offering unto him. And Moshe said, it is not meet, so, meet to do so. For we shall survive, we shall offer an offering and an abomination. It is not meet to do so, for we shall, for we shall offer our offering, the abomination of the Egyptians unto Yahweh our Almighty. That's why Yahweh had to bring them out of Mizraim. Because any offering would have been an offering. Um, out of Mizraim, out of the Egyptians, of the filthiness of the hearts of the Egyptians, Yisraeli. But you know, even at this time, that even the the um, the practices of the of the Egyptians were even intermingling with Yisraeli. Yeah, yes. Yahweh's heritage, Yahweh's people. That's not what He wants, Yisraeli. Yes. That's why it is so important for us to come out of this worldly mindset. It must happen. If we do not move forward out of that place, then woe unto us, Yisraeli. If Yisraeli if, if didn't move out of Yisraeli at this time, if, not, if they did not go forth out of this bondage or this captivity, they would have been destroyed right there. Hallelujah. But Yahweh, he did not allow it so. He's not going to allow it at this time, Yisraeli. He's not going to allow the world to bind us. Despite yourself, he's not going to allow anything that he has planned to be hindered. Why? Because he has spoken it. And what he has spoken, it shall come to flourishing, Yisraeli. It shall be accomplished. And Moshe said, it is not meet to do so. 
For we shall not Zabah or offer an offering of the abominations of the Egyptians unto Yahweh our Almighty. Lo, shall we offer a Zabah or an offering the abomination of the Mizra of Mizraim before their eyes, and they will not stone us. Yes, yes. Verse 27. We will go three days' journey into the wilderness. Why? Because that's what Yahweh desired. That's what he commanded. And offering an offering unto Yahweh our Almighty, yes, okay. as he has commanded us. Yes, yes. So even that, Moshe and Aharon, they did not fall or they did not fall or bow down before Pharaoh because of his, his offer. No, they know what Yahweh has said unto them. They know what Yahweh had placed in their lab. And they weren't going to let this king stop them, Israel. Yah. And Pharaoh said, I will let you go that you may offer an offering unto Yahweh your Almighty in the wilderness. Only you should not go very far away and a treat for me. In other words, he was saying they wanted them or Moshe to take time and a treat for him. Or to pray for him. Why? Because of the plagues of the flies that they may cease upon their houses and upon the land Yisrael. But we know that's not what Yahweh intended. That was not the plan of Yahweh. The plan of Yahweh was to move them out of that place. Why do we find ourselves so, comfort or so comfortable around the heathen? Around the wicked, Yisrael. Yahweh desires us to move or to move us out of that place. That we seek camaraderie and that we seek fellowship among the wicked. There are those that would seek fellowship among the wicked before they would seek fellowship among the aqua, amongst the hope. That's a false balance. That is abomination before Almighty Yahweh. It's a stench before his nostrils and it is not pleasing, Yisrael. It is not pleasing unto him. Hallelujah. Moving on. To Shemoth, Exodus chapter 14, verse 1. Talking about the wilderness, the Bemidbar, and the purpose that Yahweh has for his house to move us forward, Israel. We must move on. We cannot at this time remain in the places or in the mindset or where we are today, Israel. We must move forward. We must move forward. We must press on. You know, even on the radios, that, you know, as I would hear it, it was concerning this election, that was one of the coin phrases of Obama's wife, or of the Obama campaign, is to move the nation forward, or to press on. That's what Yahweh desires, just right, y'all, for his house. He don't desire us. He, he's not... Please, if I may say, or we should not be pleased in the place or where we at, but it should be a desire to move on, to understand more, to be endowed with the Ruach HaKodesh of Almighty Yahweh, that the fountains of living waters may overflow, Yisrael. Hallelujah. We're, we're in a famine right now, and it's not for the eating and drinking, because we eat of abundance here. It's not hard to get a glass of water here. Hallelujah. But yet, there's a lack for the things of Almighty Yahweh, a hunger for the things of Yah, to cease from sin, to walk after the Torah of Almighty Yahweh, to do those things that are pleasing in his sight, Yisrael. Shemoth, Exodus chapter 14, verse 1. And Yahweh, he spoke unto Moshe, saying, Speak unto the children of Yisrael, that they turn and encamp before Fahiroth between Migdal and the sea, and over against Balzepha, before it shall you encamp by the sea. Yahweh is giving a specific instructions where to encamp or where to dwell. For Pharaoh will say of the children of Israel, they are entangled in the land. And the wilderness has shut them in. Right. You know, that phrase remind me of those or my kindred that says, uh, are you sure what you're doing? Are you sure of the process or, or, or what you are about to do? You going to leave us? Yes, come on. Are there any of you that have experienced that? Your kinsmen questioning? 
your move for Almighty Yahweh as if you don't know or Yah doesn't know what he is doing. They doubt your move, forsaking all that you have. That's foolishness unto them. They call you up. Hey, I hadn't heard from you. Why? 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 What's What's going on? Well, I'm not afraid to say that I have traversed, or I am a path on a path that you're not on. As of this day, I am separating myself from you. Hallelujah. Why is that so hard for us to do, Israel? Why? Because there's some kind of a fleshly attachment, or that's been our best friend throughout the years. Well, are they walking according to the Mishnah and the statutes of Almighty Yahweh? No. Does that mean you disrespect? And what I mean disrespect, does that mean you, you just go against what Yahweh commands for them? No. No, I, I'm going to obey what Yahweh commands. Did I not just read that there should be a division between Yisrael and against and Mizraim? Did not Yahweh set a wall around Gosha, that the flies or the filthy things could not enter in. You know, we have to be wise, Yisrael, as serpents, but humble, uh, harmless as a dove concerning the Torah, the mystery of Almighty Yahweh. Because what we allow to do, we break down the word of Almighty Yahweh. We open the gate that every, unfilth, every filthy thing, thing will come in. And if one fly would have entered into that camp in Gosha, the whole camp would have been defiled. But I'm telling you, not one wing, not one leg of any fly entered into that camp. So we must guard our minds with the Torah in the same fashion, Yisrael. We cannot let our guards down, let these filthy things come in, Yisrael. So we have to separate ourselves. Did not Yahweh separate Yisrael from Mizraim? He brought them out, did he not? Hallelujah. Don't you think that should play a part? In our daily life, Israel, understanding that Yahweh has separated us as his people to be clean before him, to offer an offering that is acceptable, that is pure before him, Israel. So if we desire to do that, then we must do what Torah commands us to do. It's not going to work any other way, Israel. We must do what Torah commands us to do. So even here, he gave a specific place for Israel to encamp. Just for a time. Verse 3. Again, for Pharaoh will say unto the children of Israel, they are entangled. They are trapped in the land. These are a people of, if I may say, a people of slavery that has been condemned. That we have put vigorous labor upon for many years. They don't know how to survive out there in the wilderness. How are they going to feed themselves? Let us go out and bring them back into the land. In other words, what he's saying here. They are entangled in the land, and the wilderness has shut them in. And the wilderness has shut them in. When it seems like, you know, that's what it seems like even unto this world, Israel. That's what it seems like. That they, and they tell you you don't know what you're doing. You know, what we do should be peculiar unto the world. They should wonder. They shouldn't understand what we're doing, Yisrael. Yeah. See, Pharaoh, he could not figure that out. Why would an almighty one they call Yahweh bring them out into a wilderness where there is nothing to offer an offering unto him? He could not understand. Verse 4. And Yahweh said, and I will harden Pharaoh's heart. That he shall follow after them. And I will be honored, or I will bring my honor upon Pharaoh and upon his hosts or his armies. That the Egyptians might know that I am Yahweh Almighty. And they did so. So they did what Yahweh commanded to them, unto them, Yisrael. And we know that Yahweh, he hardened the heart of Pharaoh right to bring honor upon them. That the people of Israel may know that this mighty one has brought them out, that his name may be um, in their mind and upon their lips, that he is almighty, almighty Yahweh, that has delivered Yisrael yes. out of our hands, out of the hands of Pharaoh. And it was told to the king of Egypt that the people fled. 
And the heart of Pharaoh and of his servants were turned against the people. Have not your kindred turned against you, Israel? Mine have. And I have no problems, no qualms with it. And to be all honest, I do not miss a one of them. Why? Because I'm not going to allow the emotion of the ties of this flesh bind me. Because I see where Yahweh is moving me. I see that he's bringing me into this wilderness place to try me. To prove me. And what all that he has done has been for me to extol him. And to exalt him. Hallelujah. That his main name may be honored upon my lips, Israel. And his servants turned against the people and they said, Why have we done this? That we have let Yisrael go from serving us. Yeah. And he made ready his chariots. You know that the enemy, he's after us every day, Yisrael. His chariots are coming behind us, Yisrael. Yeah. And took his people with him. And he took 600 chosen chariots. It was the strongest chariots. It was the best built chariots. It was the armored chariots. And all the chariots of Mizraim and the captains over every one of them. That was an organized army. Pharaoh just didn't send any little army after this people. He sent his best after this people. Don't you know that the enemy is sending his best, Yisrael, to try to get us to turn? To try to prevail upon us, to kill us, Yisrael, to steal the Amunah out of our left. That's what the enemy is doing. He goes forth as a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. And Yahweh hardened the heart of Pharaoh, the king of Mizraim. We must remember that it's Yahweh that's doing this. It is Yahweh's work, Yisrael. And he pursued after the children of Yisrael, and the children of Yisrael went out with a high hand. What was that hand? That hand was the hand of Almighty Yahweh leading them, Yisrael. It was the mercies of Almighty Yahweh. Why? Because they were abiding or they, they were obeying his commandments. Yahweh wasn't going to let any harm come upon them, Yisrael. As long as we abide in the place where we should be, as long as we are in the hands of Yahshua HaMashiach, we don't have anything to worry about. We must continue to walk in the Torah, Yisrael. We don't have anything to worry about. And the children of Yisrael, they went out of Mizraim with a high hand. But the Egyptians pursued after them all the horses and the chariots of Pharaoh and the horsemen and his army and overtook them encamping by the sea by Pharaoh before Belzephon. Verse 10. And when Pharaoh drew nigh, it said the children of Israel, they lifted up their eyes. They looked about. And behold, the Egyptians marched after them. And they were sore afraid. Are we afraid, Israel? Are we afraid of the masses or what the world doing? And maybe there's a little doubt that what we're doing may not be right. We look at the masses and how the masses are moving. And because we are so yet few in number as we see them. Well, maybe, maybe this isn't the way. There should not be any doubt, Yisrael. Don't let the enemy try to cause you to doubt what Yahweh is doing, what Yahweh has done, Yisrael. We should not be afraid. But can you imagine this people went out with a high hand, jovial, happy, set free from their burdens? And then they look back and they see these, these hundreds of men and chariots headed their way. Hallelujah. But that's all right. Yahweh, he has it all in control, Yisrael. And the children of Yisrael cried out unto Almighty Yahweh. When the last time we cried out, Yisrael? When it seemed like the enemy was upon us with great power and was pursuing us with his armies. Hallelujah. When we felt like we were bound. And we could not break free, Israel. Did we cry out unto Almighty Yahweh? Hallelujah. 
Do we think if we cry out unto Almighty Yahweh, he's not going to hear our plea or hear our cry, Israel? I know it seems that way sometimes, if you be honest with yourself. Yes. It seems like your palau, your prayer just didn't make it through. That things may not be going or seemingly in your direction. But Yahweh, he has it all in control, Israel. Yes. Don't ever doubt what Yahweh is doing. You, you are his child. Yes. We are his children. Yes. We are his elect, Israel. Yes. He has brought us out. Israel didn't come out of Egypt out of there with their own power or by their own hand. It was by the hand of Almighty Yahweh. So what's going to deliver them even from this, even from the chariots? It's going to be by the hand of Almighty Yahweh. By the high hand of Almighty Yah. Hallelujah. Verse 11. And they said unto Moshe, Because there are no graves in Egypt, have you taken us away to die in the wilderness or to be buried in the wilderness? Do we think Yahweh has brought us to this place for us to die, Yisrael, for us to perish? Wherefore, have you dealt with us to carry us forth out of Mizraim? Don't you see the doubt and the concern? Hallelujah. Verse 12. Is not this the word that we did tell you in Egypt, saying, let us alone. And they did say, let us alone at, at one point. Let us abide. Have you ever told Yahweh that? Yes. Yes. You might well just be, every, one, every last one of us has. Yes. They said, we had told you to let us alone, that we may serve the Egyptians. Why do we want to serve the Egyptians or serve these worldly things? That Yahweh has brought us out of. Why would we want to turn and go back, Israel? Because we are afraid of where we are. We don't know where we're going. But yet we ought to know the one that is leading us. The one that is guiding us. The one that keeps us. The one that feeds us. Almighty Yahweh. For it had been better for us to serve the Egyptians than for us to die in the wilderness. You think that's a true statement, Israel? That's a statement out of the flesh, out of the emotions. No, it's not better for us to stay in our places and where we are and serve this world. Yes, yes. Or stay where we are and serve our flesh to continue in sin. No, it's not better for us. Actually, it's better for us to, to die, to impale this body in the wilderness than to be bound by sin. And be bound by Egypt, Mizraim, or this life, this world, Yisrael. Yeah. Verse 13, as we move on. Yeah. Hallelujah, Yahweh. Yeah. And Moshe said unto the people, fear you not. And he told them to stand still. Yeah. That's all we have to do. And stand still. And see the works of Yahweh be manifest, Yisrael. You know, you, you ever felt like running in certain situations? And sometimes the best thing for you to do is just stand still and to observe. Because if you take off running and, you know, you don't, you're not sure which direction you're running in, you're going to enter into even more danger. Even when we're, when we're, in the out, when we're out cutting these trees, Israel, it's a dangerous task. You have to be observant. You have to keep your eyes up, and you have to keep your eyes on the ground. You have to keep a peripheral. Because sometimes a limb may break off if we're taking down a dead tree, and it may fall. We have on the, the garments or the armaments, our helmets and our, our, our chainsaw um, um, apparel that a chainsaw don't cut into us. But still, a limb that weighs a couple of pounds could be a 200 pounds. Depend on how fast and when words fall from Israel. So we have to be aware of what we're doing, Israel, and where we are, even concerning the will of Almighty Yahweh. Hallelujah. Fear not and stand still and see the salvation of Almighty Yahweh, which he will show you today. Is this not today? This is still today, Israel. This is not talking about then. This is a now and a living word. Yahweh is telling us tonight to stand still where you are. Don't be afraid. 
of your surroundings. Don't be afraid of the enemy coming upon you with his strength and with his power or with his chariots. Just stand still and see the Yasha of Almighty Yahweh. Stand still and see Yahshua HaMashiach work, Yisrael Yah. Stand still and see my Torah come to pass. That's what he desires us to do. Hallelujah. But we want to run. We want to get away. I'm going to read that again. And Moshe, he said unto the people, Fear you not. Stand still and see the Yasha of Almighty Yahweh, which he will show you today. Has not shown us his mercies today? Have not Yahshua HaMashiach delivered us today, Israel? Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Yeah. He says, for the Egyptians whom you have seen today, you shall see them again no more forever. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Yahweh is saying to us tonight, if we just stand still, do what Yahweh has commanded us to do. Then you will see this day that those things that have troubled you, those things that, if I may say, have haunted you and have followed you. Have not these chariots followed the people? Yeah. The chariots are still following us today. Temptations, they follow us. The trials, they follow us. But yet, he says, if we would just stand still, Yisrael, today, that those things which are seeking to apprehend us or to, or to um, put us into captivity, that we would not see them again, Yisrael. I believe that. Hallelujah. I believe that. If I stand upon the promises of Almighty Yahweh, if I stop looking for my own way out and just see what Yahweh has done, then he will make a way for me. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. And he has made a way. And that way is Yahshua HaMashiach. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Yahweh. Verse 14. He says, Yahweh, he shall fight for you. How many of you believe that tonight? Yeah. Raise your hands up to Yahweh if you believe that tonight. Hallelujah. That Yahweh, he shall fight or he will fight for us, Israel. And you shall hold your shalom. We shall hold our peace, Israel. We should not fret. Hallelujah. Even seeing all the things that Yahweh has done in Mizraim, seeing the plagues that he has brought upon that nation, Egypt, the waters being turned into blood. Yes. The flies. All those things that Yahweh has done. You would not think a people would doubt this mighty hand. Hallelujah. But yet we find ourselves in that flesh mode or in that, that time of weakness. And all we have to do when we know we're weak is just declare that we are strong in Yahshua HaMashiach. That's all we have to do, Yisrael. Hallelujah. And Yahweh, he shall move us forward. Yahweh, we're going to allow the Egyptians to stop Yisrael at this time, Yisrael. Hallelujah. As I move on unto Exodus chapter 15, chapter 22. One thing I want us to understand, I'm not going to finish this tonight, Yisrael. I will continue on the next te teaching. Concerning loom. What is that? It's murmuring. And if we truly dissect that meaning loom, not just the word murmuring in the English, but if we look at it, um, loom, it's more than just one complaining. Yes. It's more than just that. But it also expresses a standing or abiding in one place. And what we do as a nation as, and as a people unto Almighty Yahweh, when we murmur, we stand still. We get to, or we like, we're as a stubborn mule that doesn't want to be moved. That's another expression of that, or to lodge for a moment, or to encamp. See, when we transgress the Torah of Almighty Yahweh, and we find ourselves murmuring or complaining, even after all Yahweh has done for us, even after all Yahweh has brought us through, we find ourselves staying in one place and not moving forward, as I mentioned. This should be a continuous journey forward, Yisrael. We should not be abiding or staying in one place. But murmuring will do that. It will cause you to stay or to abide. Or it will cause you not to be moved, Yisrael. How many of us want to stay 
in one place. Imagine yourself staying in one place. I'm talking about you, you're not able to, you're not going to the restroom. You're not going to find anything to eat. Not bathing yourself. You just don't move. And you will find out how much stench and how much filth this flesh can muster up, Israel. It, just a couple of days. It don't have to be a week. So we should not become stagnant in this walk. In Yahshua HaMashiach. Because it's a movement always forward. I told the ark not too long ago, I said, if you find yourself not moving forward, then it's not the hand of Almighty Yahweh. Because Yahweh, he doesn't move us backwards. Our backsliders or our sin cause us to move back. Cause us to be confined in a place where we cannot move forward. So we should not murmur before Almighty Yahweh. Hallelujah. And as I even continue in this, the murmuring, or how Yahweh has brought us into the wilderness, Yisrael, and knowing that we move with a high hand, that he is with us, is he not? Should we doubt, Yisrael, what he shall provide us on tomorrow? Food? That's the least thing we should worry about, Yisrael. But yet, as I move forward, we will find this house, even after all Yahweh has done, murmur. Why? Because uh, they're not being water. Do we not think Yahweh, he knew what he was doing and bringing them into the wilderness? Because in Mizraim, they had their flesh pots, meat to the full, drink to the full. No, there was not a famine at that time. Even though there was laboring, there was plenty to eat. But now Yahweh has brought them into a place where it wasn't like, the, like it was. It just wasn't like it was in Mizraim. They couldn't just reach over and just grab a piece of meat. Yes. See, we have our refrigerators and our coolers, and we want something. We just reach over there. Right. What would happen if that was taken away from us? How would you respond? Yeah. We have wells of water. You can go anywhere in the community, walk a few feet, and, and get some water. Yeah. But how would we respond if that was taken away? Yeah. So as it is in the spiritual realm, Israel, there are things... If we don't walk in the Torah continually, and if we murmur, displease Almighty Yahweh, we're going to find ourselves lacking. Yes, yes. Hallelujah. Yeah. Understanding that we're not in a, a, a need for food and water, but we are in, a, in need for the Ruach of Almighty Yahweh. The Ruach HaKodesh. Yes. I pray that he pour out his Ruach. He send his rain, Yisrael, the former and the latter upon Yisrael. Yes. That our brooks and that our cups may overflow with the wealth of Almighty Yahweh. Yeah. Hallelujah. I'm going to bring this to an end, Yisrael, but I do want to read some more of the Torah concerning this. Yeah, read, read, yeah. Murmuring. Let me define that a little for us. Or to loon, Yisrael. It says to lodge or to stop over, and I did express us to that, uh, of that, Yisrael. Or just to pass or to abide by night. And it also means to remain. Also... It is to, to grumble or to complain. And it's more than just a, a complaint, but it's, it's a continuousness of that. And what that, ain't, what that turns into is murmuring. If you can imagine each of us just chattering or just saying something, that, that, that's what an example of murmuring is. It's not really something that could be made out, but yet the spirit of it is so pronounced, Israel. It's almost like an enchantment or a calling out or to the spirits or to gods. Not pertaining to Almighty Yahweh. That's how wicked it is, Israel. When you find yourself murmuring to the point where there's just this, this muttering. There's no sense to it. There's no life to it. It's just a senseless complaining continuously. It will call upon every dark spirit there is. That's what it does. Hallelujah. No does that excite the love of Almighty Yahweh? No. Yahweh will destroy those that murmur, those that complain, those that mutter, that conchant, that call upon other gods and other spirits, Yisrael. We, should, you know, we shouldn't find ourselves doing this, Yisrael. We shouldn't be complaining, murmuring before Almighty Yahweh yeah. for what he has done. Hallelujah. Exodus chapter 15, verse 22. 
concerning murmuring Israel. So Moshe, he brought Israel from the Red Sea. Now we move down. We know how Pharaoh and his army, his chariots, pursued Israel even unto the Red Sea. But yet Yahweh, he lifted up his hands and parted the Red Sea by Moshe. And Israel, they went through on dry shot. Their feet didn't even get muddy. But yet when the armies entered into the Red Sea, that same path, and this is not, this is not some little fable, just some storybook, Israel. This is truth. Yahweh has opened the Red Sea for us, Israel. So can you run me out? That, that's not talking about literary. That's just figurative. No, this is not, this Torah is not figurative. This is literal. Yeah. Yahweh, he still works. His hands is still lifted high amongst the house of Israel. Yeah. He still works wonders for his people, Israel. Yeah. Do you not hear the, the beautiful testimony? What was the host's name? I'm sorry. Yeah, a whole Cosma. That was the mighty hands of Almighty Yahweh. Yeah. I have seen his hand in my life, how he has brought me out, Israel. Yeah. And each of you should be able to look back and see that same hand. Yeah. No, this is not, that wasn't figurative what happened to her. That was reality. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. So Moshe brought Israel from the Red Sea, and they went out into the Midbar, into the wilderness of Shur. And they went three days into the wilderness, and they found no water. Yeah. No water to drink. Three days. And when they came unto Mara, they could not drink of the waters of Mara, for they were bitter. Bitter waters, Israel. Don't you know that's all this world offers unto us is bitter water? And yet we find ourselves drinking of the bitter water? Don't you know Yahweh has provided us living water, sweet water? All we have to do is ask. Ask and it shall be given unto us. Seek, and we shall find, knock, and the door, Yahshua HaMashiach, he shall be open unto us, Yisrael, yeah. hallelujah. Yes. But we must, if we have the heart of, all, if Yash, of Yahshua HaMashiach, we would know what things to ask for. I'm not talking about asking for things that are not in the will of Almighty Yahweh. Yes. I'm talking about asking according to the will of Almighty Yahweh. And we should know what his will is, Yisrael. Yes. But if we ask of him, he will not hold that back from us, but he will give freely. So all we have to do, all, all Israel had to do at this time is just ask for water. But what, what did they do? Murmur. And when they came up to Mara, they could not drink of the waters of Mara, for they were bitter. Therefore, the name of it was called Mara. And the people, what did they do in verse 24? Murmur. They loom. So it was more than just, man, I'm thirsty. There's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing wrong with saying I'm thirsty. That's not complaining. But when you murmur, that's a totally different thing. That is saying that Yah, seeing all that he has done, he cannot give me water. That's, that's taking, if I may say, that's, that's slapping the hands of Almighty Yahweh when you murmur, saying he cannot provide what is needed at this time. And the people murmured, and look who they murmured against. They murmured against Moshe. They murmured against the one that Yahweh allowed to bring them out. Moshe at this time was their Yasha. He brought them out. Hallelujah. By the Torah or what Yahweh had commanded unto them. Don't you know Yahshua HaMashiach is our Yasha? But yet we find ourselves murmuring. Being discontent. I want a wife. I want a husband. I need more money. I need a bigger house. I want better clothes. Come on, Israel. Yahweh knows what we need. And he giveth unto us such that is needed. So the people that murmur against Moshe saying, Moshe saying, what shall we drink? And Moshe, he cried unto Yahweh, and Yahweh shown him a tree. Do you understand what this tree is, Israel? It's not the first time that we have heard this. That tree is Yahshua HaMashiach. Which when he had cast it into the waters. Don't you know, Yahshua, he has been cast into the waters, Israel, into these bitter waters. Don't you know that he was impaled upon that state for the sin of the whole world, the masses? 
He was cast into the waters. And the waters were made sweet. The mercies of Almighty Yahweh. Hallelujah. I have tasted of the sweetness of Almighty Yahweh. Of the waters. The refreshing waters. I'm refreshed by Yahshua daily. Hallelujah. He is my watering hole. He is my well, Yisrael. There he made for them a statue and an ordinance. And there he proved unto them. Hallelujah. Yahweh, he proves to us every day his mercies, his waters, this living stream, Yahshua HaMashiach, that continues to flow every day to us, Yisrael. We're able to drink of the waters and live. They should not be bitter unto us, Yisrael. Why? Because we have the Torah. We have the tree, Yahshua HaMashiach. Verse 27. Verse 26. And he said, if you will what? Diligently. It's more than just a search or you're looking about. It's very earnest. There's, you don't leave nothing unturned. There's no edge or corner that has not been looked at, Yisrael, or observed. But if you will diligently hearken unto the voice, did it say the voice, the call, the voice of Almighty Yahweh, your Almighty, and will do that which is right in his sight, and will give ear to his commandments. Are we giving ear to his commandments tonight, Yisrael? The commandments of Almighty Yahweh to obey his voice. To obey his malah or his manservant, his messenger, to watch after the, the, the walk after the Torah of Almighty Yahweh and his commandments and keep his statutes. He said, I will not put none of these diseases, the bitterness, the things that were experienced or that was witnessed in Mizraim upon you. He said, For I have brought upon the Egyptians all those things. The disease is Yisrael. He will not allow those things to fall upon us if we obey the Torah of Almighty Yahweh. He says, for I am Yahweh that heals you. I believe that tonight, Yisrael. That if we walk in the Torah of Almighty Yahweh, if we abide in Yahshua HaMashiach a continuous, continuously and diligently guard our love, that Yahweh he would not allow these diseases to hinder us or to come upon us to consume us, Yisrael. But he is our Yashat. He is our salvation. Hallelujah. Let you know that Yahweh is our salvation tonight. And Yahshua HaMashiach. He has been sent. Anything that is in you that has been bitter from the world, from your sins, it has been cleansed by the dumb of Yahshua HaMashiach. Hallelujah. And those waters have been made clean, clean, clean tonight, Yisrael. Hallelujah. I'm going to close right there, Yisrael. I pray this message tonight has been an inspiration to your love. That we continue to walk in that which Yahweh has commanded us. And what we will find is that he will provide at that time everything that is needed. He has brought us out of Egypt into a wilderness place for a time for us to be tried, Yisrael. So... Are we going to be afflicted or tried or certain things going to be taken from us? Sure. That we may trust in Almighty Yahweh. That's all Yahweh wanted Israel to do in the wilderness is to just believe, to just trust in him. If they would have done that, it would not have took them so long to enter into the promised land. But because of the murmuring, as I said, it caused them to stop. It was a delay in the process, Israel. But still yet, in the end, Yahweh... He got what he wanted, and that is a pure people. Hallelujah. That's what Yahweh desires us tonight, Yisrael, is to walk pure, circumspect, according to the Torah, Yahshua HaMashiach. Hallelujah. I do barak Yahweh for this day, for this opportunity to stand before you, Yisrael. And again, I do barak you, those that are listening, those that have come and gathered with us here. Hallelujah. I do barak Yahweh for you all, and I do, honestly, all of you. All the house of Yisrael. Because we will not be complete without you. We will not be complete without you. Uh. We will not be complete. Hallelujah. Before, because Yahweh, he is, he is Ekah. He is one. 
He is complete. He is whole. So we must be whole and complete as a nation, Yisraya. Hallelujah. Um, let us stand to our feet, Yisraya. And let us turn, let us shoe unto the city of our Abba. Hallelujah. Amen, Yahweh, we do Baraki for this day. You have given us Abba Yahweh. For you have kept it this day. You have given us breath. Every breath came from you, Yahweh. Even the breaths where we were not even thinking about breathing, Abba Yahweh. You gave it freely unto us, Abba Yahweh. And we told you for that. We told you for your Malak that has encamped round about us, that have protected us today, that has protected those that have traveled here, that has protected Yahweh, even those that are listening by via of live stream. And as we heard on this message tonight, tonight, Almighty Yahweh, you will not allow Yisrael to be consumed by Mizraim, by anything, not by the afflictions, not by our pains or our flesh, but you will bring us out, Abba Yahweh, with a high hand. And for that, we do Barak you, Abba Yahweh, for all things, for everything you have done, Yahweh. In the precious, in my name of Yahshua HaMashiach, I do declare, Hallelujah! 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 Way! Hallelujah! Hallelujah! Yahweh Barak called Yisrael. Hallelujah!